In the discussion of moving away from fossil fuels, there is only one alternative to petroleum transportation fuels, and that is biofuels. Biofuels are the only substitute for fossil fuels that are able to replace each of gasoline, diesel, and jet fuels, all key fuel sources used for transportation. As such, biofuels may be critical for a transition to a low-carbon energy future. However, it is important that Canadians weigh the overall emissions reductions with the cost of the policy, especially with alternative reductions methods in mind. Biofuels are made from renewable biomass. The two most common biofuels are ethanol, made by fermenting the sugars in organic materials, and biodiesel, created by extracting naturally occurring oils from bioproducts. Ethanol and biodiesel can be used as substitutes for gasoline and petroleum-based diesel, and are generally considered an environmentally friendly alternative. While biofuels do emit greenhouse gases when burned, the plants used to create the biofuels remove CO2 from the air during their lifetime. This provides some balance to net emissions over a short-term cycle. Biofuel policies were put in place worldwide in order to help individual countries meet their emissions targets, and there are currently 64 countries with established biofuel mandates. The Canadian policy, the Renewable Fuels Regulation, requires fuel producers to have a minimum biofuel content of at least 5% in gasoline and 2-4% to in diesel. In 2014, Canada produced roughly 1.7 billion litres of ethanol, primarily from wheat and corn, requiring the equivalent of 17,000 square kilometres of farmland, roughly the size of Lake Ontario. As a comparison, 105 billion litres of petroleum was produced in Canada in the same year. For the majority of biomass sources in Canada, the lifetime emissions are lower than in petroleum. On average, Canadian biofuel policies have reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 3.5 megatons per year since the policy was implemented, the equivalent of taking 1 million cars off the road annually. However, this only accounts for 0.4% of Canada's total annual emissions. The relatively low emission savings occur for a number of reasons. First, most vehicles can only use ethanol blends up to 10%, and in Canada, the blend that is used is typically closer to the mandated 5%. Low blend ethanols produce only 3 to 8% fewer greenhouse gases than gasoline. Second, emissions are produced over the lifetime of the biofuel and must be accounted for. Life cycle analysis of biofuels account for crop type, known as the feedstock, crop yield, land use, farming emissions, transport emissions, and many other factors. Due to Canada's short growing season, feedstock yields are considerably lower than those in tropical climates. Brazil, for example, grows an abundant amount of sugarcane, a high sugar content crop with several crop cycles annually, and produces the second most ethanol in the world behind the US. Canadian feedstock producers have one crop cycle each year and primarily produce corn and wheat, starchy crops that require higher amounts of energy to process. Repurposing land may directly result in large greenhouse gas emissions. In many countries, rainforests are burned or clear-cut to make space for biofuel crops. This has the compounding impact of releasing massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, while also destroying rainforests, which are enormous carbon sinks. Afterwards, the biofuel crops require large amounts of fertilizer and water, further increasing their carbon footprint. Land designated for these crops is not used for food crops, meaning additional land must be repurposed. Next generation production methods may address some of these issues by producing biofuels from non-food energy crops and organic wastes. Energy sources include energy-specific crops, residues from forestry and agriculture industries, and algae oil production. While most of these next-generation technologies are in the early stages of development, they do show promising emissions savings. All in all, when considering emissions contributions across a lifetime of production, conventional biofuel emissions vary widely compared to traditional petroleum, ranging from a 100% decrease in emissions to a 20% increase, dependent on the production style and feedstock. However, it has been suggested that in Canada, alternative options may exist that are more efficient at lowering emissions and end up being cheaper for the end user. The current biofuels policy is calculated to cost Canadians $640 million per year, roughly $185 per ton of CO2 reduced. However, alternative emissions reductions policies, such as carbon taxes, are much lower. British Columbia taxes carbon at $30 per ton, reducing emissions by an estimated 5 to 15%. Environment and Climate Change Canada has estimated the social cost of carbon, or the social damages caused by carbon emission, to be $41 per ton. At the moment, a new emissions policy, the Clean Fuel Standard, is being developed and is expected to be released in 2020. 
This policy is intended to incentivize use of low carbon alternatives, implementing lifestyle carbon intensity requirements for fuels, and complementing the pan Canadian carbon tax. With all of this in mind, how do you think biofuels should fit into missions policies? 